What's up YouTube? It's Carolina Calvin coming back to you with another video and welcome to my NFL 2019 week six game recap between the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Carolina Panthers in London pick up the 37 to 26 win by a terrible turnover field game for the Tampa Bay offense. Um, this is the second meeting with Tampa, Tampa Bay winning the first one in Carolina. Um, so the season series is split. And let me just, before I get into you know the turnovers that, that Tampa Bay team, Jameis Winston had six of them. But let, let's go ahead and get into the numbers. Starting with Tampa Bay, Jameis Winston, 30 of 54, 400 yards, one touchdown, five interceptions. Five interceptions. Now, not all of these interceptions are completely on him. Now, now I'll get I'll, I'll get into them real fast. Um, I believe his first interception. Okay, the the first throw of the game. That one was his fault because Bradbury had tight coverage, and it's one of those cases where Jameis Winston wants to force the ball in there. Now, that one's on him. That first interception was on him. Um, the next one. I think it was the uh, Elliott got the interception. His, his arm actually gets hit. So pressure cre created that interception. Now, I know he'll stick at the blame because people say he made the throw. But if you look at it, he did get hit on the arm. So I'm not going to put all the blame on him. Now, he gets blamed for a majority of these turnovers. He gets the blame for a majority of these turnovers. Um, Let's see. The one after that, I believe that was the one to Luke Keekley. Garbage. This is his third interception, and he's not even getting to the fumbles. He had one. He actually had two fumbles. One was one he actually recovered. He fumbled in back-to-back -back plays. Dude was insanely bad game, man. Um, but the one to Luke Keekley, completely on Jameis Winston. He threw it right to him. If I remember correctly, the pressure wasn't really there. Now the Panthers got a lot of pressure on him. Uh, they actually sacked him seven times. But that was definitely it was like Jameis. What are you doing? And that was definitely one of them. Um, this was his third interception. The fourth interception, he throws two interception in the final two drives of the game, which the team, uh, the Tampa Bay was still in the game. They're still down eleven uh, with like five, four or five minutes to go in the game, and he throws one interception where he, it, the Panthers play a lot of zone. Ross Cockrell is waiting he's sitting on that he's sitting on that throw he kind of breaks back because he reads the quarterback eyes and Jameis stares down the receiver he jumps the pat he cuts the route picks it off but I'm pretty sure that was zone on that play so Ross Cocker was gonna be there anyway and Jameis did not recognize that it was that coverage and it was an easy pick for Cockrell so I'm putting that on Jameis Winston for not recognizing the play there I know he was trying to get the first down, but that, that one's definitely on him. So, getting into it, four of these, three of these interceptions are on him. Last one, uh, I don't. it wasn't the greatest throw, but you can also get on Mike Evans for not coming back to the ball hard enough um, to kind of make kind of making a play on it. But it was probably a throw that should have went to the back of the end zone. It was because that was where, where um, Mike Evans' momentum was carrying him. So it was probably a play he should have drawn into the back of the end zone. So, it, you know, receiver got to got to help his guy out. And James is trying to make a play at the end. I'll still put equal blame on both receiver quarterback because it wasn't the greatest throw. And Mike Evans was clearly look, looking for a different throw. Um, But it, it, still, it was still a bad game. There was some throw, plenty of throws he missed. Um, he held the ball a lot, took a, ran into a lot of sacks. Like I said, the fumble was all on him. He held the ball for so long. And like I said, he fumbled on literally on back-to-back -back plays. He fumbled the ball. Um, but, yeah, he, really bad game for Jameis Winston. Yeah, he put, picked up the 400 yards. That's because they had to throw the ball. They were down at one point in the game by three scores. He had to throw the ball. You know, the running game was essentially eliminated at that point because of the early turnovers. 
which Carolina got 20 points off turnovers. So it already put you in the hole at the beginning. Um, but going down, Tampa Bay rushing. Peyton Barber, eight carries, 28 yards. Jones, uh, four carries for 10 and a touchdown. Um, this is on the... This is actually on the uh, Ray Ray McLeod um, punt return fumble, which, you know, of course, let me make sure. Is that the same? Yes, that's, that's the same possession. Um, no, that's not the same possession. I'm sorry. That that run rushing touchdown came later in the game. I'm sorry. Um, looking, uh, let me see, uh, Agumba Wale. Ooh, I said that right. He had one carry for three yards and a touchdown. Um, so, you know, they did have two touchdowns. A lot of it was, it was short field. Um, you know, just after driving down the field, throw, 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 you know, pretty much throwing it most of the game. Um, but they did get two touchdowns. They only had a total of 14 carries, 42 yards. So not a lot from the run game, but this, like I said, the score eliminated that. Uh, Tampa Bay receiving Chris Godwin, 10 receptions, 151 yards. Dude's a beast. Dude's a beast. Very, very underrated guy this year. Um, I actually have him on one of my fantasy teams. He's been he's been putting up crazy numbers. He's been putting up more numbers than my um at least in terms of fantasy points. He's been putting up more fantasy points than Mike Evans, who's the number one guy. Uh Mike Evans, nine receptions, ninety six yard break, two receptions, forty seven yards and a touchdown. Miller, three receptions for thirty nine. O. J. Howard you just expect more out of him just based on physical ability, but he just really has – he's been so inconsistent for them. Uh, two receptions for 35. Agumba Wale, three receptions for 22. And Wilson, one reception for 10. Um, Tampa Bay's defense. That defense played great, actually. The, the, don't look at the score because your team, including your offense and your special teams – when they turn the ball over seven times, what is the defense supposed to do? You know, uh, they they gave up twenty points off uh, on seven turnovers. That's actually not bad. Um, seeing that they they were putting a lot of short fields, they were on the field more than they should have been. Obviously, if you don't turn the ball over, they wouldn't be on the field as much. Um, but I think the run defense was great. The run defense was great. Uh, pass defense. Um, pass defense. Excuse me. You know it was solid, but the run defense. That's what Carolina wants to do. They want to. Um, it's with Christian McCaffrey, and Tampa Bay did a great job against the run. It's something they haven't in the past. They haven't really been great at is run defense, but they did a great job in in this game against the run. And they gave the offense multiple chances. You know the, the initial interception. They forced three, you know, they forced uh, the Panthers to kick a field goal. So I think the defense wasn't, obviously wasn't the biggest issue. It was the turnovers. But the defense played, played pretty good, especially the run defense. Um, Going over to the Carolina Panthers side, Kyle Allen, 20, 20 of 32, 227 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He has not thrown an interception this season. Um, He didn't fumble either, so it's a good, another good sign. Uh, you know, Kyle Allen, I think, um, with the way the defense, you know, the defense has been great during this, uh, four game winning streak and Christian McCaffrey, you know, he made some plays in the first half of this game, really not much in the second half. Um, I think Curtis Ham, Curtis Samuel really stepped up in the second half, um, with his two touchdowns, but, uh, Kyle Allen, you know, he's not throwing interceptions. Like I said, as long as he's not having a fumbling problem, he doesn't really turn the ball over like that. I, like I said, the fumbling is, you know, was the issue in the uh, first few games. But uh, he doesn't really throw picks. So, you know, he's, he's coming there doing his, I said, like I said in the last video, he's coming there, he's the backup, he's doing what he got to do. He's not losing the game. Letting the Panthers, uh, letting Christian McCaffrey, you know, establish the run. And the defense has been getting takeaways, and the pass rush has been able to get after, you know, get after these quarterbacks the last four weeks. Uh, Carolina rushing, like I said, wasn't great. Christian McCaffrey, twenty-two carries, thirty-one yards, and a touchdown. That's a one-point-four average. Like I said, Tampa Bay defense played great against the run. Uh, DJ Moore, one carry of thirteen. Curtis Samuel, 
uh, one carry for eight and a touchdown. Alex Armand, two carries for four yards. Kyle Allen had three yards for three yards. It wasn't great. You know, Panthers still picked up two touchdowns, but 29 carries on 59. Uh, 29 carries for 59 yards. It's a two-yard average. So other teams' defense did, you know, t- Tampa Bay's defense was great against the run. Um, Carolina receiving. DJ Moore, seven receptions, 73 yards. Curtis Samuel, four receptions, 70, and a touchdown. He had a really nice touchdown where he literally snatches it from the corner. Um, you know, he he's, he he stepped up in his, in his game, especially with uh, – them pretty much been able to neutralize Christian McCaffrey. Um, Greg Olson, four receptions for 52. Christian McCaffrey, four receptions, 26, and a touchdown. He made, like, uh, I believe he made three guys miss, and he, he made it look easy. Um, dude's a beast, and five and hearty set. Defensively, um, Bradbury, let me see how many... Bradbury had two interceptions. He had the interception at the end of the game, and he had the first interception of the game. So he had the first and last interception of the game. Ross Cockrell had an interception. Luke Keekley had an interception. He just throws it right to him. Uh, and Elliott has a, had an interception. So you have four guys with an inter- interception, one guy with two. Um, the Panthers had seven sacks in this game. Gerald McCoy, which is probably his best game, Ironically, so is against his former team. Had two and a half sacks. Bruce Irvin had a half a sack. Uh, Vernon Butler, who stepped up with um, with Kwan Short being on IR, he stepped up. He he had um, he had he was the one who stripped Jameis Winston um, to you know, so the Panthers could recover that fumble. He had two sacks in this game. Brian Burns, who um, he's been good. He's been able to get pressure. He, he gives them gives the team that youth, that speed coming off the edge. So they were able to get pressure. Um, I can't remember who forced. I want to say it was Brian Burns. It might have been Bruce Irvin who forced the uh, the Elliott interception, which uh, he hit Jameis Winston's arm, made him under throw the football, easy pick. I want to say that was Bruce Irvin um, on that play. But I think up front, up front, uh, the defense was good. You know, when you I said this in the past, when you're able to rush four guys and those guys are able to get after the quarterback, it makes it easy on, you know, you, you got your backs, you got your back set and you're able to drop your linebackers. It makes those throws harder to make because you got so many defenders to throw against. And, you know, Carolina did dial up the blitzes. They dialed up the blitzes. They'll send a the safety. They'll send a corner. Um, but a lot of it is four man rush. And, you know, they're ro- rotating a bunch of different guys in there. You know, got a couple injuries, but uh, I'm sorry. Dante Poe also had a sack, um, if I didn't bring up his name. But I like what they're doing up front. Defense, they, you know, you can still see on two of the bigger drives, two of the longer drives in this game, you can see Tampa Bay. There was holes in the, sec- in, the in, in that zone defense. On, on the sideline, there were holes in that defense, which they're going to have to fix up. They're gonna have to fix as the teams get better. You know, you're trying to play, get into the playoffs. You got to better fix it. You still got to play the Saints, and more than likely, when the Panthers have to play the Saints, Drew Brees will be back. So you definitely got to clean something like that up. Uh, looking at the team stats, third down efficiency, Carolina three of fifteen, not great. Like I said, Tampa Bay's defense was good. It was just the him turnovers. Uh, Tampa Bay five of fifteen on third down. Panthers one of one on fourth down. That was the run by Christian McCaffrey. We extended the ball. Look, kind of looked like he didn't get in. He extended the ball to the goal line to get it. Uh, Tampa Bay is one of two. Tampa Bay also converted two two point conversions, which is you know one was a tip, like the ball was tipped in the air. Mike Evans got it. it was definitely some uh, some luck that goes into it. Um, total yards and it looked. Panthers only had 268 total yards. They only had 268 total yards. Like I said, it was the turnovers. Uh, Tampa Bay had 407. Um, penalties. You know, it's another. It's another thing that goes against 
Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay had nine penalties for 70 yards. The Carolina Panthers are one of the least penalized teams. They only have three for 30. But it's another thing. You have this. We have a bunch of penalties and a bunch of turnovers. You're not beating anyone. Uh, time of possession, Carolina, 31 minutes, 10 seconds. Tampa Bay, 28 minutes, 50 seconds. But, like I said, you know, keys to victory for the Panthers. You know, um, being able to take care of the football. Like, they had the Ray Ray McLeod fumble, which did lead to a touchdown for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But, for the most part, the offense took care of the ball. The offense didn't turn the ball over. And capitalizing on take you know on takeaways. This this is the key to the Panthers winning this game. The key to the loss for Tampa Bay. You can't turn the ball over seven times and expect to beat any NFL team. You just can't. You can't turn the ball over seven times. The nine penalties, but the seven turnovers. Uh, the fumble what was a fumble by. Um, give me one second. Who fumbled the ball? I think his name was. I think it was a. Uh, why did not tell me who fumbles? But anyways, um, Bobo. <laughs> Funny name, but um, he had the. He was the one who had the punt return fumble, which. You know it that. That that's back breaking, man. You can't turn. Can't turn the ball over. Can't turn the ball over this many times and win. So both teams, you know, looking as you go into the uh, rest of the games, this does not slow down the critics for Jameis Winston with this many with six turnovers alone. It just doesn't slow down the critics who already question his playing ability. You know, they're they're going to be even louder now. And Carolina, Cal Island. You know, he the team's winning. I think it's it's in this game, it was getting the turnovers and it was getting pressure on Jameis Winston and the Panthers taking care of the football. The, the Panthers offense taking care of the football and actually being able to move the ball when they needed to and get points. Not an explosive offensive game by any measure, but they played clean football. Tampa Bay didn't. Heading to, you know, as you go into the season, when there's a bye week coming up in week seven, I don't know the thing going on with Cam. Will he play? Uh, when will he play or whatnot? But we'll we'll see. Um, schedule's going to get a little tougher. You still got Seattle on the schedule. Still got, actually, in week eight, they played the 49ers who are undefeated right now. Um, they, you know, the team looks, look, uh, is looking pretty good. So we'll have to see. You know, you still have uh, what's they still have? You still got the Colts on the schedule. You still got New Orleans twice. So there's still some big games um, for in the rest of the season. We'll see how the Panthers play. Won the last four, and the defense is you know everything is stepped up. The defense, the running game. We'll see how they finish out. You know, we'll see how they look after the bye week. You know, whatever, wh- whoever is back there playing quarterback. Just want, I just want to see the team win. But uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. I'm sorry, kind of, uh, just kept going on. But uh, like I said, let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.